I'm pretty sure that all of us who are into retro computing are at least familiar with 3D effects to some extent. In fact, most of us are probably well acquainted with the company's history and their products as well as their eventual downfall. While most of their voodoo cards are fairly well known, there are a few that are a bit lesser known, such as the Voodoo Rush. But there's one card that seems to often get overlooked when discussing 3D effects, that being their budget entry into their ever popular Voodoo 3 family. Allow me to introduce you to the Voodoo 3 1000. Now this card is also known under a different name, that being the Velocity 100, and honestly, I'm not sure which name the card is better known under, as finding concrete details about this card has been a somewhat frustrating endeavor. The specs of the card have probably been the biggest challenge in particular. There's different sources that seem to either contradict each other, or just don't seem to tell the whole story behind the card. On Wikipedia alone, there are two different charts that list different specs for these cards. So prepare yourself as I attempt to explain what the heck the Voodoo 3 1000 is exactly. All Voodoo 3s used the same core, which was codenamed Avenger. This was 3DFX's first flagship product to incorporate both a 2D and 3D rendering core on the same card, and was built as a follow-up to the Voodoo Banshee. The main difference between products being what speed they were clocked at. Like the other Voodoo 3s, it was released at some point in 1999, but I haven't been able to track down a definitive day or month that really seems to have much evidence to it, so it's anyone's guess on that one. There seems to be two different revisions of the Voodoo 3 1000 out there. There's one that's clocked at 143 MHz, which is the same as the Voodoo 3 2000, and one that is clocked down to 125 MHz. The 143 MHz versions usually have a heatsink on the core, while the 125 MHz ones usually don't. Most of cards appear to only have 8 MB of VRAM, however there do appear to be some that were sold with the same 16 MB of VRAM that the rest of the Voodoo 3 line had. I've seen some people say that the amount of RAM is dependent on what speed the core is clocked at. I'm not entirely certain if that's true, but based on the few examples I've seen floating around, I'm willing to believe that may be right, with the 143MHz version having 8 megs and the 125MHz version having 16. Initially, these seem to have been sold only through OEMs, a prominent one being Gateway, as they were available as an option in their Essential line of computers. But they were later sold at retail, as I found forum posts of people seeing these for sale in flyers for as low as $50 in around mid-2000, and all of them seem to be equally as confused as me as to what the heck this card is. Oh yeah, and atop this whole thing off, there's also a Velocity 200, which even less people seem to talk about, but as far as I can tell with that one, it's just a Voodoo 3 2000, but with only 12 megabytes of VRAM instead of the normal 16. Well, that's pretty much what I've been able to gather from my research. Not a definitive answer, but I think we at least have a bit of a better understanding of the card. What I can at least tell you with certainty is what the specs of my particular card are. Mine originally came from a gateway, as denoted by the sticker on the BIOS chip, and is clocked at 143 MHz with 8 MB of SG RAM. Yes, SG RAM, not SD RAM, like the other Voodoo 3s, which may give us some interesting results in our comparison later on. At this point, some of you are probably thinking, wait, so it's just a Voodoo 3 2000 with half the RAM? That's pretty anticlimactic. And it would be if there wasn't one additional twist to the card. Since the core is clocked exactly the same as the Voodoo 3 2000, 3D effects likely didn't want the 1000 to eat into the sales of the 2000 by having its performance be too high, so they decided to disable one of the texture mapping units, or TMUs for short, in an attempt to separate it from the rest of the lineup. Now, 3D effects really phoned this part in, as rather than disabling it at the silicon level, or in the BIOS of the card, they just disabled it in the driver. What's even weirder is that they only disabled it in Glide and OpenGL, 
Direct 3D is completely unaffected by this. As you could probably guess, it didn't exactly take people long to figure out how to re-enable it, which means you could get a massive boost in performance from doing just a little bit of research online and about a minute's worth of work on your computer. So apparently it's supposed to be pretty easy to re-enable the second TMU on a Voodoo 3 1000, so I'm actually going to go ahead and try it right here. Uh, I found this article from a non-tech from, I believe, October of 1999. Uh, it's actually for the Velocity 100, but you know, they're... They're basically the same card. Uh, apparently all we have to do is do something in the registry, but before we do that, we're actually gonna go ahead and double check here in Quake 3, because conveniently, Quake 3 will actually tell you how many TMUs your video card has. So all we have to do, uh, actually I think this also works in Quake 2, maybe GL Quake, but I know for sure it works in Quake 3. All we have to do is open up the console, uh, page up, until we get to this point here, GL Renderer, 3D effects Voodoo Banshee. It calls it a Voodoo Banshee for whatever reason. I don't know why. It's it's just how Quake 3 detects the card. Uh, but all we care about here is the one TMU part. So the driver is indeed disabling one of the TMUs that's built into the Avenger core of the Voodoo 3. And what we want to do is re-enable that because obviously it's going to give us a bunch of extra performance. And if we go here to the article, it says to go to this point in the registry which I will now open up the registry, open up RegEdit. So it's H key, local machine, system, current control set, services, class, scroll down to display, and then you have to figure out which number folder uh, is actually for the Voodoo 3 1000. Now, if you're like me and you've had a bunch of different video cards that have been in and out of the system, uh, there's gonna be a bunch of different folders. Uh, it kind of creates a new folder, I think, for each different video card you put in. Uh, so you have to figure out which one actually it is if you've had multiple video cards. Uh, I figured out mine is 0003. Uh, and then from there, you just have to click on the Glide folder. And then what you're going to want to do in here is we're going to click New, uh, String Value. And we're going to name this uh, FX underscore Glide underscore Num underscore TMU. And I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste that from the article. And then all we want to do now is double click on it. We change the value data to two for, I guess, two TMUs. I'm guessing that's what it is. And without cutting now, we're going to see, we shouldn't even have to restart the system. I'm just going to minimize these. We're going to go right back into Quake 3 and it should immediately pick up the second TMU. I didn't even realize you could bring the console up during the video. All right, but page up, moment of truth. Bam, right there, two TMUs. It's literally that easy. One registry key. You don't even have to restart the system to re-enable it. <laughs> wow, they were really lazy with that. Like, it's so easy. Like, how they, they had to have known people were going to figure this out. Like, right? Like, this is so phoned in. But, yeah. You could get a bunch of extra performance for literally reading a single article online and just copying and pasting stuff in. In fact, it could have been even easier. You could have just downloaded a .reg reg file and it would just do it for you. <laughs> that That's just crazy. I don't think I've ever seen uh, a mod for your graphics card be so easy before. I'll be testing the Voodoo 3 1000, both in its stock form and in games that are using OpenGL and Glide, with the second TMU re-enabled. Of course we need to test it against its bigger Voodoo 3 brethren, so I'll be including my Voodoo 3 3000, which is clocked at 166MHz and has 16MB of RAM. I don't have a 2000, but I'll be underclocking my 3000 to the 143MHz clock that the 2000 runs at. This should effectively be just as good as a real 2000. I'll also be including NVIDIA's budget offering from 1999, the somewhat infamous Riva TNT2 M64. And no, the M64 doesn't stand for 64 megs of memory. It's referring to the memory bus being only 64 bits wide, which was its main cost-cutting measure. My card is pretty much a stock M64, with a slightly higher memory clock and 32 megs of RAM. 
I'm using the latest official Voodoo 3 driver from 3D Effects that was released in November of 2000, and I'm using Forceware 5.32 for the M64, which was released in June of 2000, as older NVIDIA drivers tend to perform better on Windows 9X compared to the newer ones. I was originally going to include a Rage 128 as well, but my cards didn't seem to be playing nice with my test system at the time, so I've opted to leave it out. And speaking of the test system, I threw together a Pentium 3 AGP test bench because it's the fastest system I have that can take older 3.3 volt AGP cards like the Voodoo 3. It has a 1 GHz Coppermine Pentium 3 with 512 megabytes of RAM on an 8-bit VH6-2 motherboard running Windows 98 SE. Oh, and a Sound Blaster PCI-128 in there just to have some sound. Please note that in the games that support it, I will be testing the 3 d effects cards using Glide when possible. People will usually test all cards across the same API, however, I find this approach somewhat flawed as it's unrealistic that someone wouldn't choose an API that was designed and optimized specifically for their hardware. So if you want to label it as an unfair test, you can but in the real world, I find this approach to make a lot more sense. Starting off with 3D Mark 99, we see fairly predictable results, with the 1000 coming very close to our simulated 2000, and with all of the Voodoo 3s beating the M64. 3D Mark 2000 shows a very different story, with the 1000 dropping well behind the 2000 and even the M64, this is likely because the card only has 8 megabytes of RAM and is crippling its performance. GL Quake gave the 1000 even more problems. I was originally going to test the game at 1280 by 1024 in order to really stress the cards. Well, it sure stressed the 1000 alright, as it pretty much refused to run the game, spitting out maybe one frame a second. So I had to bump it down to 1024 by 768. Now that it's working fine, we see the 1000 with a decent lead over the M64, but still trailing far behind the 2000. What's more interesting is the 1000 with both TMUs actually got an identical score of 75.7 FPS to that of the 2000, which makes sense since GL Quake was designed for cards with a lot less than 8 megs of RAM, and thus shouldn't be seeing any bottlenecks. Quake 2 again shows the stock 1000 beating the M64, but what's really surprising is seeing the 1000 with both TMUs actually beating the 2000 by a slight 1 FPS lead. And this wasn't margin of error either, as it gave me the same results after multiple runs of the benchmark. If I had to guess, I'd say that the SG RAM the 1000 has may be giving it a slight lead in bandwidth compared to the 2000. We again see the 1000 with two TMUs with a slight, albeit smaller lead over the 2000 in Quake 3. However, the stock 1000 has now fallen behind the M64 by about 7 FPS. In the classic Castle Flyby of Unreal Gold, we see the stock 1000 with a slight 4 FPS lead over the M64. And we see the 1000 with two TMUs with its biggest victory yet over the 2000 with nearly a 5 FPS average lead. It's even within spitting distance of the 3000 as well. Not bad for what was essentially a budget OEM card. That SG RAM must really be getting put to good use. The gap closes significantly in UT99, with the 1000 2 TMU, 2000, and 3000 all within 1 FPS of each other. I'm not sure what the bottleneck here is exactly, but it may be down to the CPU or some sort of architectural limitation, as the demo file I used is very intensive with a lot of action. And the stock 1000 is still managing a small lead over the M64. Since Pod Racer doesn't have a built in benchmark, I had to use Fraps to record the first lap of a race on Tatooine for my testing, so the results may not be 100% accurate run to run or even be accurate in the first place, since Fraps isn't always known for being the most accurate with its FPS readings. Anyways, we're seeing results that have become kind of predictable at this point, with the 1000 having a slight lead over the 2000, while getting quite close to the 3000, and the M64 falling behind as usual. And finally, in Serious Sam, things are not looking good for the Voodoo cards. 
This game came out several months after 3D FX released their final drivers, and as such has no optimizations for this game. The M64 is managing to beat the stock 1000 slightly, and the 1000 with two TMU is flat out refused to complete the benchmark, crashing in the exact same spot every time. In fact, the stock 1000 also failed its first run, but I did manage to somehow get it through on the second time, albeit with several second long pauses throughout. I also tried running the game in Direct 3D, just to see if that would help, however the results were similarly crashy. In conclusion, these cards just suck at running this game, at least with the stock 3D effects drivers. So this Voodoo 3 1000 really surprised me. I was expecting the 8 megs of RAM to really hinder its performance, but at least in games from when the card was new, it didn't do too badly. We do start to see it fall behind quite significantly in 3D Mark 2000, and I imagine this trend would carry on into future games from 2000 and beyond, as they were being designed with 16 or even more megs of memory in mind. But at least when the card first came out, I could see it being quite a compelling option for customers who were buying a PC from, say, Gateway. As for its presence as a standalone card on the retail market, it is a bit more interesting. Like I said, I don't know for sure when exactly 3 d FX started selling it directly to consumers, but by mid-2000, for just $49, even with its limited RAM, I'd still say that was one heck of a good deal. And if you got one of the ones that had more RAM, well, you'd probably be able to overclock it. Provided you had some better cooling, you could probably match or surpass the 2000 for a much lower price. So the Voodoo 3 1000 is a pretty fascinating little card. It had quite a lot of potential, with just a few tweaks and maybe a bit of overclocking. So it's kind of surprising that it was never really that popular with enthusiasts, or at least not that I've been able to find. Perhaps its start as an OEM card made it fly under the radar, and people just kind of forgot about it. If you had any experience with this card back in the day, be sure to comment about it, as I'd love to hear what your experiences with the card were like. Now, should you buy one of these today for playing old games? Well, it's not a bad card by any means, and if you find it in one of those old gateways, it makes for a pretty good starting point for a Windows 98 gaming machine. But trying to buy one on its own will likely be a bit impractical. They don't seem to pop up on eBay very often, and when they do, they still go for a lot more than they're really worth, at least in my opinion. Pretty much no 3D effects card is safe from high prices these days, so if you want an affordable card for Windows 98, honestly, just go buy a GeForce 2 MX400. They're like a fraction of the price, they're still in that late 90s, early 2000s time period, and are a lot faster. So I hope you guys enjoyed this look at a somewhat obscure Voodoo card. I've had a lot of fun while making this, and especially thanks to Nathan from Pixel Pipes for putting together GPU June 2. I definitely recommend you go and check out the official playlist for more graphics card content, as well as check out last year's GPU June playlist for even more. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.